All right, I want to make this video real quick. At the time of recording this, it's the last day to vote for the country role awards. You know, we already know what people say about this. You know, nobody takes it seriously. You know, it's a joke. But aside from that, though, what is Reddit saying? What are they voting for? How are they feeling about this? So let's just go through some of these real quick. And by the end of it, I'll do my vote. I haven't done the voting yet. I haven't really looked at it. But let's just do this real quick. Every show with more than three nominations Oshi no Ko, 11. Chainsaw Man, 17. Boshi Rock, 10. Jujutsu Kaisen, 14. Demon Slayer, 11. Villain Saga, 5. Attack on Titan, 10. One Piece, 4. Five Family, 5. Heavenly Delusion, 5. Hell's Paradise, 7 and Zom 105. And when you when you see the numbers, you're like, ah, Lee. Chainsaw Man got voted that many times. Surprisingly, more than Jujutsu Kaisen. It's very crazy to look at the numbers. Oshi no Ko or Chainsaw Man will probably end up winning. It should be Bochi, though. And I say that as a Chainsaw Man ride or die. My heart says it should go to Bochi or Villain. My gut tells me it'll go to Jujutsu Kaisen because that's a Crunchyroll darling. Just a quick question regarding the anime awards since I'm a bit slow and not too sure. For Crunchyroll's anime awards, are we including the whole season 2 of JJK or just the first half of it? I could be wrong, but isn't JJK season 2 on here kind of messed up isn't due to their own cutoff if you vote for it you're technically only voting for the hidden inventory arc not saying hidden inventory wasn't good but i doubt most people will take that into consideration considering shibuya just finished yeah i was thinking about this and be a lot of recency bias because technically shibuya did start in the summer anime it didn't really start popping off until the beginning of fall i think there's a good chance you're probably gonna see it again next year i could be wrong we'll see but definitely you can have a lot of people thinking shibuya arc shibuya arc Sukuna versus jogo Sukuna versus maha whatever that statue demon alien looking bitch whatever his name is whatever you call it yuji versus maito you know big moments in fights like that are gonna be the freshest thing in people's memories it's a little unfortunate so we'll see how it turns out next year best must protect at all cost character pochetta from chainsaw man already dead okay yeah this doesn't really make sense i, I don't know what are you protecting i mean spoiler uh he, he's dead i mean technically he's not dead but um what are you protecting i mean you, you failed what are you protecting he, he's, he's gone you might as well just throw in denji or something i don't understand how he made it what I, this doesn't make sense to me yeah it's just really odd Nez Zuko nominated for best voice. I swear the judges of the anime awards this year are either trolling or gone full dumbass. But don't they already have such a track record in past years? I'm curious how the English voice actor for Nezuko was nominated. There are definitely other voice actors who could have been nominated. Wish we really had more variety. Who even chose these? They had Nezuko from Demon Slayer as a nominee for best voice actress. She only said Good morning. Okay, when I first seen this, I thought they were trolling. I was like, there's no way. Because I, I looked at it and I didn't see anything. But then I, I looked at it again and I was like, what drugs are they smoking? You know, I don't watch it in English, but I'm pretty sure it's not that much different. But that's just some tomfoolery. I just, and, honestly, if I was an English voice actor, I, I'll be pissed. I'll be like, yo, what are you on? Hey, Amen. But I digress. Dangers of My Heart got robbed out of Best Romance. Shaking my head. Dangers in My Heart, nine Best Romance. But Skip to Loafer is. Damn. The Dangers in My Heart, the highest rated romance of the year, wasn't nominated for Best Romance. Why? The dangers in my heart got snuffed for Tomochan and the filler chapters of Horimiya. Who on this committee is smoking crack? Yeah, it's really weird how the dangers in my heart was not nominated. Definitely, definitely got snubbed. I've seen most of these. The only ones I haven't seen is Skip and Loafer and Tomochan, so I can't say anything about those. But honestly, the dangers in my heart is better than all these. I'm sorry, it just is. You know, I didn't realize this until recently, but you can tell that the author has a good amount of experience when it comes to relationships, romance. It all shows with how the characters are written, how they handle certain situations, how they interact with other characters, the things happen around them the two main characters don't necessarily need to say how they feel about each other it's all expressed through their emotion their body language how they talk to each other their actions as long as they're in each other's presence it all shows that's how they know how they feel about one another it actually feels believable it's kind of relatable honestly though i don't think hori mia should be on here i like hori mia it's a good show it's a good romance but this is just bonus chapters filler stuff stuff that wasn't adapted it was more comedic and slice of life than romance let's be honest definitely should not be on here so opinion here chainsaw man what's in season one isn't something i think it should win anime the year but later seasons running would be more fitting demon slayer season 3 source myth isn't really on that level i would call anime of the year ocean no i love the series but i'm not sure it should win against some titles on the lineup great premiere and the reality show art got adapted really well mochi the rock the latest show really great animation and creativity fun slice of life stuff and characters but i don't think it can be the big two in the lineup jjk season 2 hidden inventory and shibuya went absolutely crazy and i absolutely respect the director and team for pulling off but how terrible map of ceo was being schedule wise pretty strong contender for top two in the running. Vinland Saga Season 2 is Farmland Saga. What else do I need to say? Vinland Saga was the best thing that came out this year, and it isn't even close. Been a while since a piece of art got me this hard. Yo, wait. Whoa. 
Oh, let me read that again. Wait. Been a while since a piece of art got to me this hard. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Vinland Saga. Yeah, it was really good. Um, the fuck. Vinland Saga season two for me. Chainsaw Man for my sister. Jujutsu Kaisen and Boti for my friends. 2023 was a really good year for anime without mentioning the other shows outside the nominees. I, I like this post. You know, I want to see more people include their friends and family. You no, know, maybe they're not on Reddit. So, you know, you could, you know, talk for them. But interesting. Interesting lineup. Okay. All really good choices. I enjoy Shonen as much as any other person, but it's hard for me to put them as anime of the year for some reason. It's probably just getting an older thing because I did enjoy the ones I watched, yet I know I wasn't fully invested. Mbochi and Oshinoko, however, had me anticipating episodes every week. I got a Hive Dive account just for Oshinoko, and I'm going to 100% rewatch it both at some point down the line. The other ones I don't see myself doing that, you know, I definitely get this as you're getting older. You know, you've seen all the tropes, cliches, even the same story and plot. Maybe you just don't have the time to fully invest into the show, you know, it work. Maybe you're telling a family. So I kind of understand this. Anime of the year has got to be Vinland Saga. Story-wise, character-wise, and the message of the anime, Vinland Saga really outshined every other anime. Thor friend's character development and also the depth in all the side characters, Jutsu Kaisen was extremely hyped in fights and some shock factors. But this goes to show you that anime fans mostly love action. Mochi the Rock was a sweet, wholesome anime too. It's sad for an anime to get popular, action needs to be there or people will find it boring or not interesting. That's a sad reality. And that's what Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, and Chainsaw Man offer the best. But the storyline and writing just isn't on par with a masterpiece like Vinland Saga. I agree with this and I disagree with this because Mochi the Rock is none of those. It's not action, it's not shock factor, but it became really popular, surprisingly. Look at Free Ren, very little action and very slow paced, but it's doing really well. It's still number one on my anime list. I think it's somewhat slowly changing. Of course, you know, action is still gonna be number one. It's gonna dominate, you know, fighting shows, you know, shorting. It's understandable why, but I, I get it though, but I disagree. I only saw a villain, but I don't know that there are any other alternatives that are better. Honestly, kind of based. Vinland Saga deserves anime of the year, but if it doesn't win, then it's fine. I have no enemies. I swear, if the orphan doesn't win for best character, I'm gonna be so upset. If he doesn't win, I won't be upset because. <laughs> Remember the lesson, my brother. We have. No. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. We're gonna breeze by these until we get to the anime of the year category. Best voice artist performance, English. I haven't watched anime in dub since I first started watching anime. Okay, so out of these six. <laughs> okay, so out of these five, the original Bleach is the only one I've seen in English. So I could be a little biased, but I mean, I listen to other voices and you know, they're just, <clears throat> you know, it just, you know, I'm gonna have to give it to Johnny. Best voice artist performance, Japanese. Now this is tough. These are all good choices, but I'm having to give it to Takanaka. And it's not because it's Luffy. I'm not the biggest One Piece fan. I'm not a meat writer, but the only reason I'm gonna give it to her is because for Gear 5, she actually switched it up her voice, you know, the tone, the way Luffy sounded. <laughs> So and I respect that, you know, she's like, you know what, I'm gonna switch it up and do something different. Let's get crazy, let's get wacky with it. Best ending sequence. These endings are really nothing special to me, but I'm a big spy family. It's more of a vibe and low key a bop. Best opening sequence. Honestly, all these are fire, but you can't go wrong with any of these. At this point, it's just up to preference. And visually, all these look really good. For me though, the one I have to go with is Where Our Blue Is. I don't know what it was about this song, but I just be moving and grooving. It's just a bop. I, I don't know what it is. Best score. Ah, I can't really remember the score, the, you know, the soundtrack for, you know, the shows uh the only one that really stands out to me is attack on titans you know for that one scene you know for that one moment that fit it perfectly you know it's been a minute since i've seen some of these oh uh, actually all these it's been a minute i haven't seen susan man but uh the one that stands out the most that i can recall i'm gonna give it to attack on titan best anime song what what's with all this music stuff god damn um i guess we're just talking about anime song like a song that you just even though it's an anime song you could just still just jam out to it you know vibe to it honestly idol is the only one that really you know, i feel like you could throw that on especially since you know it's going crazy if we're talking about anime songs definitely idol fits that perfectly must protect at all costs character honestly there's only one right answer because most of these characters do not need protecting i haven't seen gundam so i can't speak on this character but the three that definitely do not need protecting is anya boji and midi i haven't seen buddy daddy's dad buddies i haven't seen it but i'm pretty sure one of them's like a cop a detective or assassin spy whatever something like that so it doesn't seem like she doesn't need protecting like that anya definitely does not need protecting lloyd one of the best spies he's the best spy in the country your is a fucking dog fuck he, yo she like who you you're not protecting honestly you're not protecting her from anybody she's good same thing with boji boji is he was supposed to be weak but he's really strong and he's surrounded by a lot of people that really care for him so he's good too do they really need protecting no so i'm gonna have to say for me boji makes the most sense best supporting character all good choices but there's only two right answers and that's either reagan or hanji you know i don't want to say too much i don't want to spoil anything hanji just a really solid all-around character they really stepped up i think even before that they were really doing their thing took on a bigger role set them to spotlight i really enjoy the character and the comedian Moments. <laughs> 
Reagan from season one to season three. Just a beautiful emotional journey. He was a scammer, poser, swindler, trying to be somebody he wasn't. But even through all that, he was still somehow a role model to mob and he realized his faults. So regardless of all that, he was there at the most important and pivotal point in mob's life. So honestly, in my eyes, it's just a massive W. Beautiful character development. So I got to go with Reagan, the more realistic and relatable character. Best main character. Nenji and Bochi, I need to see more from. Luffy, you know, just Luffy. So realistically, I think it's between Thorfinn or Mob. Now, this was season one Thorfinn. Get him the fuck out of here. Because season one Thorfinn, I did not like. Thankfully, he had a good cast of characters around him. But now looking back at it, it all comes full circle. Honestly, it's a master class example of how you do a well-written character. You know, from season one to season two, drastically different. Just a complete 360. You take this one-dimensional character who's just driven by rage, completely change him, his environment, his view on things. Just masterfully done, just very well-written. Mob is another example of how you do a well-written character. Just a young, lost boy who doesn't know his place in the world. Where is he going to go in life? Is his powers useful? Him trying to understand people, the people around him, the world. You know, it was just beautiful to see his character from the beginning and to where he's going to go in the future, you know, as he gets older. This is a really tough choice. You know, I'm going to go with Mob. You know, I really relate to him. Best slice of life. I haven't seen Do It Yourself or Skip and Loafer. The obvious choice is Bochi, but I'm going to go with the Underdog. I'm going to go for Insomniacs. This one felt the most slice of life-ish. Best drama. The obvious choices are either Oshinoko or Vinland Saga. But I'm going to go with the Underdog again. And that's the Eternity Season 2. Really need that Season 3. And best fantasy. Demon Slayer. Yeah, let's just vote for a jobless reincarnation. Surely it won't happen again, right? Best action. It's time to be biased again. I'm voting for Bleach. Now, this was the second half of JJK. Definitely would have voted for it. Also, it's kind of weird that it's the second half cover when the other nominees have been the first half. Best comedy. Can't speak on Buddy Daddies, but the rest of these in comparison to Bochi, kind of dull shit. Because Bochi is in a different class. Just the way they go above and beyond to handle certain scenes and the references, these do not compare. So, obviously, I gotta go for Bochi. Best romance. Since the obvious winner isn't here, I'm gonna vote for Insomniacs. Really enjoyed it. Really liked it. You know, you really felt that progression of them getting to know each other and develop feelings for one another. Best art direction, along with cinematography, character design, and animation. So disrespectful how Bleach was not nominated for any of these. Especially character design. If we're being honest, Bleach is probably top three character design of all time. I'm also convinced Hell's Paradise is an industry plan because art direction and character design? Hell no. Regardless, best art direction, I gotta give it to Chainsaw Man. Like I already said, it doesn't feel like anime. It feels a very different from all these. It's very cinematic. Best cinematography, I gotta give it to Heavenly Delusion. When it's focused on the darker, more serious stuff and the monsters appear, there's just a shift and emphasis on the tone of what's happening. Best character design. Chainsaw Man's a close second with those assets, but I gotta give it to Oshinoko. You know, the outfits of the characters, the style, the colors, their hair, their fuck eyes. Low key, Oshinoko kinda watches all these, except Chainsaw Man. Best animation, Mob Psycho, no doubt, no question. It may not have the best art style, but when it comes to those fighting scenes, that animation is, mm. Best director, low key, I wanna vote for Bochi, but I'ma vote for the Chainsaw Man director. It's a very unfortunate that they were let go. Now, I don't read the Chainsaw Man manga, but I do know Fujimoto's a big fan of Western films, Tarantino films, and I definitely could feel that as I was watching this. Honestly, to me, it didn't feel like an anime. It felt very cinematic. So, I'm hoping for the movie, and whenever season 2 gets announced it's not that much different best original anime i haven't seen any of these except akiba may war and that's gonna be my choice definitely you have not seen akiba may war give it a chance you might be surprised i know i was totally caught up guard i did not expect i did not know i was watching but it was a pretty interesting to watch best film i have not seen any of these um <clears throat> best new series really hard choice ocean oko was really good chainsaw man's really good hell spirit dice was cool zon 100 despite its production issues still enjoyable heavenly delusion even though i fucking despise those last two episodes was still really Really good which by the way if you don't know what i'm talking about go watch my last video bochi was really good really surprised me did not expect it to enjoy it as much as i did so i'm gonna have to vote for bochi it had no business being as good as it was best continuing series it's kind of a chico to have one piece on here if this was a completed season of jujutsu kaiba then this would have been a harder choice even though they had the fucking cover for the second half but i'm gonna vote for villain saga and finally anime of the year honestly i don't think jujutsu kaiba or demon slayer should be on here i feel like you're throwing mob psycho msn shadow season one maybe even blue lock demon Demon Slayer Season 3 was kinda ass. It felt like it was trying to be similar to Season 2, but not as hype. The demons weren't anything special or interesting. It was just boring, dragged out fights. There was that moment with Tanjiro and Nezuko's flames and just started going absolutely crazy. Kaburimai. 
that was really hype. But then there's that moment towards the end. I don't want to spoil anything, but you're like, damn. And then you're like, oh, eh. Now, nah, I already had my answer. And so, Villain Saga is my anime of the year. What else is there to say that hasn't already been said? It was a really good, phenomenal, really great writing, character stories, and growth. Just peak fiction. You know, just like Chainsaw Man, this does not feel like you're watching an anime. It's a breath of fresh air and a nice break from your traditional anime. Honestly, though, all of these, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen in future seasons. Man, 2023 was not a good year. Man, this is not a good take. Bad take, dog shit take. Maybe for you, it wasn't a good year. Or maybe you're just a bitter, bitter person. You just hate seeing people have fun with all these different outlets of entertainment. But 2023 was an insane year. Not just for anime, but movies, shows, music, uh, maybe for certain genres. I'm not too sure. And obviously games. Games went crazy. It was just an insane year. You know, hopefully 2024 is a better year for you. And then you'll look back at 2023 and realize, you know what? I'm a dumbass. 2023 was a really, really phenomenal year. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What did you vote for? What was your anime of the year? Or just leave a random comment. Like and subscribe. Share with everything you might enjoy my content. Other than that, I'm out.